So in the previous video, we saw the fundamentals of baking. And today we're going to see how do we actually bake uh, using those fundamentals or keeping those fundamentals in mind. Um, so just a recap from last episode, from last video is uh, the three most important things that we need to consider at least uh, to understand uh, to get our bakes to look right is the normals or the smoothing group, understanding how UVs uh, relate to baking, and the baker settings, uh, which are mostly the most common one, is average normals on and off. In some other bakers, like Mama said, uh, you may find uh, smooth uh, rather than average. That word may be used differently, or smooth bake result, or smooth bake, or smooth cage. Um, so we're going to see how uh, these sort of work. Uh, the, third, no, the third fundamental, which is baker settings, average normals, uh, it just relates to how the cage that is based off uh, from the frontal and real, real distance. So the cage or the bonding box, which is based off from the frontal and rear distance, that distance uh, is just saying, is it average or non-average? So it's just essentially saying, are they smooth or not smooth? Um, in some other, like Mamu said, may have it, they call it smooth. Um, so we're just going to see how uh, this sort of applies and what kind of uh, good results and bad results do we get. So let's just, let's get started. So when I come to Maya, I have this high-res mesh that I've broken down into um, I sort of put it all in this one uh, cube per se, and we're going to bake this and see how the bake results will end up. So this is what we call floaters, and floaters are generally used uh, a lot when it comes to games. But there are many people nowadays, because of Substance Painter, uh, they just make individual height maps and it is projected and it textured in Substance Painter. So that I don't have to go through uh, baking it twice. Uh, here we see some mistakes that will happen, uh, very early on mistakes that may happen with some people. And that is when, uh, when we bake from an object, let's say we come to our left view, uh, this may not result in a nice bake. So for example, if I switch off my wireframe, what you may only see in the bake result is only the edge of this cylinder baked on top of this cube. Uh, or a low res cube, not necessarily this cube. But here we see that if we taper it out a bit, we sort of see that there's some shadowing that's happening and we get some uh, depth result. Um, in the front, we have some cylinders to say that uh, when we have normal maps, normal maps will not automatically make the hole in between the mesh, rather to just project it from this point of view. And on the top view, we have a very simple uh, tree tapered, uh, well, not tree, but uh, five tapered cylinder-ish looking things that uh, will result in a decent bake, at least or give us some problems here and there. So I'll do is I'll select this high res mesh and I'll file and export this out and I'll export this out in my scene file. So I'll go this crazy high. And for my low res, uh, I'll just be using a, a simple low res cube that is exactly on top of this high res. Uh, now ideally I just wanted to keep it within this region and I don't want to scale it too high or something like that or anything of that sort. So uh, another thing to note from this low res mesh are the UVs. And if I if I hide this high res mesh, if I see the low res cubes, uh, the low res cube, uh, I'm using the default UV. But what I did do is I just scaled this down a bit so that it doesn't touch the borders of this UV, uh, just to see what kind of result we get. So uh, the first, I'll duplicate this one. So just to go through, similar to this sort of setup, I will first go through the normals when we saw soften edge with a default UV, right? So let's do that one. So let's come and set Maya, let's select this cube, and we'll say mesh display soften edge, which will soften out the entire cube's uh, normals, or vertex normals. And here we see that when we view our vertex normals, we see it's averaged out, and the reason why it's black is because it's facing away from the camera. So I'll come over here, I'll select and export this guy, 
uh, export this guy in the same place. I'll call it uh, low res default UV, but I'll call this uh, soften edge or SE. Okay. And then export this as an FBX file. So file export selection as an FBX file with smoothing groups turned on. So inside of Substance Painter, I'll re import this file. And uh, this will be underneath SE default UV or smoothing or soften edge default UV. And Substance Painter died. Cool. Let's just restart that. Come to file, new, let's do select, and let's get this in. Okay, and I should get this cube in. So, what I have over here is I have this uh, cube with the default UV on, as you can see. And what we see is this is a very generic uh, uh, softness cube that we would generally see. Which, if you get the light over here, we see some black edges behind and some dark edges on this side. But anyway, I'll just come to my texture set settings, bake mesh maps. Um, I'll just switch, I'll only bake my normal map. I'll change it to a 1K map and I'll get my high res in. So in this case, I'll get my crazy high res. Um, if you guys want to see a more basic high res, like more simple one, uh, for example, let's say I'll import, I'll import a very simple high res one or high res mesh, which looks something like this. Uh, this is just some nice edges that we can see. So normally we, we would bake it out uh, something like this and we bake. Uh, ideally this should be fine, right? Ideally we get some nice edges uh, and we see a wide frame. Uh, it's a super low res mesh. Uh, but the difference in this case is what we see in a normal map on a big normal map is this gradient looking uh, normal map. Now sometimes it's very hard to replace uh, this normal map especially when you uh, bake things twice and you know uh, we shall go through in a while uh, and project some other images on top of it it becomes sometimes of an issue uh, and merging normal maps may be an issue especially when we come into edit project configuration and replace our geometry with a soft and a hardened edge mesh uh, so for now this is fine uh, but let's see the result from the crazy high res that we have is that crazy high res we bake this out and we see. So the first problem that we see uh, in a big result is that it's not really uh, getting all the information that we have. So we see this cube, you know, most of it is not even visible. So we went through these options last time uh, from our Photoshop file. So we also mentioned about frontal distance, which is in charge of sort of uh, firing the rays from a higher distance. So let's change that op value. So let's increase the frontal distance and let's just bake now and see. So now we bake what we see is yes, the values, uh, it's sort of got it, it's sort of got the values and it sort of baked down to this mesh. Of course, it's still never pushed it that far. We can still see there's some white, uh, we can see this flat line over here on this part. So if we just come into bake mesh maps, increase the frontal distance a bit, um, let's bake that out. So that should solve that problem, right? Uh, yeah, we can see that it's not really visible, and uh, I think that should be okay because this is technically the same height. Is a problem that we want to see on a flat cylinder. So ideally, what we get is uh, based on this view, uh, when we bake with our soften edge or our averaged normals mesh with a default UV, uh, assuming everything is ideally the same we get this sort of big result. Now the good thing about this big result is we get some very nice edges. But the bad thing is we get these sort of problems here, which, are, which end up in a skewed result problems. So here we see that these guys actually are skewed inside. Right? And this is not how a big should be. Right? So rather we, we want to sort of have them flattened out. So what do we do in this case? So we come back to Maya. And let's just hide this high res and let's just view this guy. So rather than uh, using a, 
uh, you know average mesh I would rather let Substance Painter take care of averaging out the corners right rather than in Maya you average or non average for example let's say with this average mesh if I come to bake mesh maps and if I switch off this average normal by right once I switch this average normal off uh, people may think that oh it unaverages the geometry but it's not true uh, what it does is it just reads the original normals from the geometry and it breaks it down now in this case the original uh, the original normals in this geometry are, are averaged out and we still get the same result so no matter what, what we do in this case, average on or off doesn't make any difference to our bake. So we can do that. We can change some of that out. So in my when we come to mesh display and harden edge everything, and let's export this guy out and see if there's any difference. So I'll take this and I export it as low res default UV, and I'll go to Substance Painter, Edit, Project Configuration, come in over here, default UV, Click OK, and we'll see that our normal maps actually are not well replaced. So even though it's uh, exact, it's exactly in the same place. The UV is exactly the same, but we can see that these normals do not work, and we need to rebake them again. So let's come to a bake mesh maps, switch on average normals, use the same options, and then bake it again. What we see now is uh, we see a different problem, right? Uh, we see some of the edges that are good. So let's just uh, see this issue. Um, so let's see our normal map. So normal map, see, we see that it's no longer the gradient result, but we are still getting a lot of problems. So what are these problems? Uh, if you identify these problems, you can see that uh, areas, uh, let's just change the color. Let's make it a red color. So let's just say a green color for now. Let's say the ones that are good. Let's say this one is good. All right, let's just see on this guy, this one is good. Uh, this one seems to have an error. Uh, this one sort of seems to be okay. Let's see, maybe this one. And this one. This one. Yeah, this one seems to be fine. And the rest of them might be having an error. Right? So, you see, the rest of them is, um, you can see that these guys actually rather have this line around them. And let's go to our UVs and see this out. So what we see is the green guys that we selected are primarily are the ones touching outside. And of course, there are some that I missed out, like one on the top and one on the bottom, but that's, that's fine. What you want to primarily understand over here is that uh, when we bake our normals, what exactly is happening is um, the UVs that are there, this is what we would call as the UVs that bleed on top of each other. Right? So the, the and the reason why the ones that are outside are fine is because there's no bleeding artifacts happening around here. So what we can do is we can solve this problem by sort of separating this UV shell from one UV shell to another. And how do we do that? Basically, we just come back to Maya, come in over here, and we say, all right, so I'm going to select these edges. I'm going to cut this out. And all I want to do is select all the UV shells and lay out them. Now, I'll just lay out them automatically, uh, just so that we get an idea. I'll just separate them out to, by some gap. Uh, it's what you would call as uh, UV padding, UV shell padding, whatever we like, or whatever you like to call it. So I come to File, Export Selection, and now we'll see that uh, we call this lower as split UV, because we are splitting the UVs out. And let's replace this geometry that we have inside Substance Painter. So I come to Edit project configuration and I will get this low res split UV this is the one that has a split UV and of course it's not going to work uh, it's not going to be the same so I'll come to big mesh maps and I'll say same options and let's see the results now right. so now you see that uh, all the edges that were there within this section this section and this section is mostly solved yes we do see a very mind very small line but that small line is uh, almost impossible to get rid of. Right? From far away, ideally this should be fine. Right? I mean, it's still a low poly mesh that we currently see it. Right? It just looks like a high res mesh. So what I've done is we have successfully baked down uh, our high res geometry to our low res geometry uh, using some of the techniques like average 
or non average normals. And if you come to the Substance Painter, what we have done is we baked it with the average normals ticked on. Now, with the average normals ticked on, we can see that the edges are pretty much good now, right? There's no longer this problem. But if I switch off the normals, if I switch off average normals, now if I bake, what I'll see is the guys on top, or what I would say is these guys over here are actually fine. Right? This is actually fine. But what the problem now has happened is now the edges are not fine. Right? Now why is this so? Because when we are baking using uh, non-average uh, normals purely, uh, what happens is the normals bake exactly from this top. And uh, that, ha that sort of creates a problem for us because it breaks exactly from top and exactly exactly from this side we get some missing information on, around this corner this corner and that missing information is ideally what's important um, for, to get this curve so if you guys see the previous video that I did uh, when we let me just create a new layer around here so what exactly is happening is even though we are using a non-average in this case in Substance Painter, and when we bake it down, right, uh, we have this missing information around the side. Oh, that's some crazy lag. So what Substance Painter allows us to do is it allows us to average out this one, thus causing the interpolation issue, which you can see from here. And because of this interpolation skewed part, what we see is the mesh around the corners around here will be skewed much more than the one in the center. And we can see that very clearly inside Substance Painter. Once we average the normals out, what we see is, yes, the edges are actually, uh, the edges are okay because it's sort of got the information from that missing part that was there. So the edges are fine. But what we see is these guys are skewed much, much, much more around this part. And that is something that happens but by averaging and because of the interpolation that takes place. So ideally the solution, the main solution to this is we just need to make sure that we bake using average normals off once and average normals on the second time and then we can combine them inside Photoshop. Okay. Um, so we leave that for another video in combining normal maps and sort of finding a solution. But for now, uh, we just need to understand uh, that when we bake with average normals, we get nice edges. And when we bake uh, with average normals turned off inside of Substance Painter, we get nice flat surfaces. And uh, both of them have a good and bad side to it. Hence, that's what I have uh, in this picture around here, if you see, that uh, even though we split the UV, and we see the last these two parts around here. So the first uh, the first one is uh, split UV. They both average uh, non-average normals. They are both split UV. So if we see um, inside of this picture, what we have is uh, we have our two non-average meshes. Uh, that's a high-res mesh big down on these two non-average uh, geometries. Both of these geometries have split UVs. One of them has average normals turned on, one of them has average normals turned off. And we can see the good and bad. So the left hand side is average normal on. You see they have nice edges. On the right hand side, average normal is off. Hence we see good flat results. And the problem of both, right? They both technically just have uh, op opposite problems. Right? So in the next video we sort of see a solution to all of this. Right? So see you around. Bye bye.